sure that everything is uh, working properly. <laughs> and uh, it appears that it is. So I just had to get my iPad set up so I can make sure that I am live and I could kind of check out the comments when they come in and all that good stuff. So hopefully my iPad's going to cooperate with me. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Oh, there it is. It's coming up. Yay. So I hope you guys all had a fabulous couple of weeks. And, and all that good stuff. Well, so hopefully my iPad's going to cooperate. Didn't have the volume turned off. Oops. I hope you guys had a great couple of weeks. Uh, I had a tooth out last week. That's why I wasn't here. Um, and I actually got the tooth out at like three o'clock. So the week prior to that, I was supposed to get it out at eight o'clock in the morning. And I thought I can go live if I get my tooth pulled out at eight, but at three o'clock, mm, that's pushing it. So uh, last week I decided since it was at three o'clock that I was not going to be live. So I was not here last week. Um, I was uh, sitting on my in my favorite chair in my uh, family room out there watching some trash TV. And I don't even really remember what I was watching because they did give me uh, some painkillers. And I don't always take painkillers, but I thought to myself, you know, why not? I don't have anything to do. I'm just going to be sitting here watching TV as by myself. My husband was at work. My son was, who knows, doing son things. And I thought, you know what? I'm just, I'm not going to be miserable sitting here. I'm just going to, I'm just going to be good. So after I got the tooth pulled, I went to Walmart to get my prescription. And then I wandered around the store a little bit and got some yogurt and some like yogurt smoothies, a couple of bananas, um, like some soft foods, you know, because they tell you to eat soft foods for a few days. So I did. So what do you think? Anyways, it's all good. Uh, it still kind of hurts a little bit sometimes if I eat uh, too aggressively. <laughs> Is that a thing, eating aggressively? <laughs> so if I eat too aggressively, uh, it, it still is a little bit sore. So there you go. But all in all, it was a very easy, easy experience. I didn't expect it to be anything horrible. I've had a tooth pulled before. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, unless you are um, don't like needles in the mouth. That's not pleasant by anyone's standards. Uh, but... I've had a lot of dental work done, so I'm kind of used to it, as much as I hate to say that. <laughs> but it's true, I've had a lot of dental work. Um, and yeah, so now I'm uh, one tooth down, which I don't think is going to be any big deal. It's the very back one in the bottom. I've already had the very back one in the bottom on this side removed a number of years ago, and it's totally fine. So I don't anticipate having any issues having this one gone as well. So there you go. So, I did miss you guys. I thought about you for about mm, five seconds. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> While I was watching some trash TV on my painkillers. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. And then a so few of you reached out to me, you know, to see if I was okay. And I appreciate that very much. You guys are so sweet. I don't think I was able to get back to everybody. Um, a couple popped up while I happened to be on my phone. And so I did respond to those of you that I saw at that moment. But thank you guys so much for checking in. I do appreciate that very much. Um, so yeah, it was a good it was a good time getting that tooth pulled. Woohoo! So yeah. But I'm back now. Things are good and we are just rolling along. And I I always sit here and think to myself, hmm, has my son done anything that's worthy of sharing with the internet? And I don't think that he has. I know, a surprise. He does lots of silly things. However, we're supposed to get a big snowstorm, so who knows? It's possible something stupid could happen at that point. Oh my gosh, yes, the, yes, he did. Oh, <laughs> I should have known something would come to me. Uh, last week, my husband had his snowmobile engine rebuilt. It kind of blew up here a couple months ago, and um, so he had it rebuilt. So he's got a brand new engine in his snowmobile. So apparently when you get a brand new engine in your snowmobile, when you, the first few times you take it out, you have to be careful with it. You can't just like wrap, you know, wrap it out to the maximum RPMs, whatever that even means. Uh, you, have to, you have to be a little bit careful with it and just kind of go a little bit slow. So they went snowmobiling on Sunday, him and my son. Um, and my son decided that he was gonna go up this mountain. Well, his description of the mountain was like this. Um, come to find out the mountain is called fiberglass hill. Not that it's like that on a map, but that's what people call it because this is what happens. If you don't have enough power in your slide and you're going up fiberglass hill, 
you aren't going to make it. And so when he realized he wasn't going to make it, he tried to turn off. That didn't work so well. And he rolled down the hill. So yay. Of course, I found that out after the fact, after they were here and they weren't dead. So, um, and then when my husband said, yeah, fiberglass hill. And my son said, are you kidding me? That's what they call it. He said, yeah, because that happens to people all the time. They think they can get up the hill. They can't. Well, I shouldn't say it's a hill. It's a mountain. Uh, they can't get up the mountain and then they roll their sleds and they lose pieces of it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but I think he was able to get off of it before it rolled. I mean, thank goodness, you know, geez. Anyways, he was able to get it turned right side up in waist deep snow and get out of there. So that's a 19 year old kid for you. They're not super bright. I don't know if any of you have 19 year old sons and hopefully it's not just my son that's not so bright sometimes. Anyway, there's a little story for you. Ah, I should have known I could come through because he does so many, so many silly things so many times. Anywho, uh, looking at the comments, oh, somebody said my hair looks nice. Thank you so much. I just got it done a couple weeks ago, I think. And um, yeah, my hairdresser does a really nice job. I really, she does a really nice job. And you know what I just found, you guys? I found this hair tool, this, this like blow dryer thing that's like a brush. It's like a blow dryer round brush that I found. Um, and I actually got my daughter one for Christmas and then I tried hers out and I loved it so much. I went and bought one for myself. They were like a Christmas special. Well, this particular model of it was a Christmas special at Walmart. They were pink. I'm not a huge fan of pink stuff, but whatever. Oh, I just realized I have a bleach spot on my shirt. <laughs> Oops. Anywho. Um, so I decided to get one and oh my gosh, that thing, just the way I do my hair, because I obviously use a round brush and I kind of roll it under as I'm drying it. This thing is amazing. Where has it been all of my life? And I'm not even kidding when I say that. This thing is a lifesaver. It literally used to take me with a round brush and my blow dryer, you know, sectioning it off and ugh, ugh. half an hour, half an hour to dry my hair. Literally, I'm not even making that up, a half an hour. And then I still would have to flat iron it a little bit to get it to be nice and smooth and whatever. This thing, oh my gosh, it's just, it's incredible. I think Beverly just said she has one of those and she loves it. It is amazing. I wish I would have known about it years ago. I've been struggling doing my hair and I hate doing it because it's such a pain in the rear end. You know what? Hold on, I'm gonna run into my bathroom and grab it. How convenient that my bathroom's right there. Uh, this is what it looks like. It's like a, there, it's locked together. It's a called, it's a Revlon. Hmm. Does it say on the plug what it's called? I don't remember what it's called. Somebody tell me what the name of it is. Um, <laughs> I can't remember, but this is what it is. There's two different styles. This is like the 2.0 version because the barrel is a little bit smaller. The other one that they have, this is like a two and a half inch barrel. It's it's oval. It's kind of like an oval thing. Uh, they do make one that's like four and a half inches. Now my hair is fairly short, so I don't think a four and a half inch barrel would really work for me. So uh, I guess thankfully I waited until they came out with a smaller version. This was only $25 at Walmart. I actually bought two because I thought, what if it breaks? I'm going to need another one because you just never know. Anyway. It's amazing. The cord swivels. It's got a bunch of different settings on it. It's got a little, the only thing that's kind of sucky about it is it gets super hot. So you cannot like touch it. You have to use, you definitely have to use the handle and this little grippy thing on the end here um, because it gets really hot. Um, but that's the only downside of it is it gets super hot, but it does. Holy, this is very minimal flat iron work on this hair right here. This is the work of this, this brush. This thing is crazy. It's amazing. So anyway, if you guys have a Walmart where you're at, you might want to check it out and see if they still have some. Um, I don't know if they do or not, but yeah, for $25, wow. And if you have hair that's kind of like this, it actually, I watched some YouTube videos on it and there's some gals that actually have like longer hair and they'll like, instead of, you know, rolling it under like I do, they'll kind of roll it like this and then they get like kind of beach waves. If your hair's a little bit longer, you can get some beach waves with it. So yeah. 
10 out of 10, highly recommend. Not a sponsored video, by the fa by the way. A lot of influencers always say that. This is not sponsored. <laughs> I'm not getting paid to say that it's amazing. I'm just telling you guys that it's amazing because it's amazing. So there you go. Okay, I'm going to flip the camera now, and we're going to do a little stamping. And yeah, so hang on. And then if I'll see if there's any questions I can answer about this fantastic tool. All right. Let's see. We'll get this. Come on. Flip camera. There we go. All right. So we need to do a little adjusting here with my leveler. We got to get right there. That looks good. Get this out of the way. And move my seat. Get my glasses. Okay. I'm ready to roll. I'm ready to roll, people. Okay, uh, first thing I want to talk about is this little sketchbook. I received this as a gift from Sherry um, over Christmas. I haven't done anything with it yet, but yeah, I need to. It is a little sketchbook. It is a book that you can keep track of fun sketches here, color combinations that you might enjoy, measurements of cards that you've seen, products that you need. It's a pretty cool book. I find it super handy. Um, I am going to use it. I've just got to get my poop in a group here, as they say. But anyway... I've had a number of you guys message me wondering where she got it. I found it on Amazon, and I do have it linked below in the description of this video. At least I think I did. Yes, I did. So there's red. I think I linked pink and purple also. So it's a fantastic, it's only like eight or nine dollars. It's not expensive at all. So I uh, wanted to throw that out there. Those of you that were asking me about it, there you go. Um, I have gotten a couple of cards in the mail. I got this fun one from one of my team members, Shanna. So thank you so much, Shanna. She sent this to me with her team swaps. And oh my gosh, you guys, let me find this. She sent me some of these. They're called Utah Truffles. And this is a mint chocolate mint truffle. Holy cow. I, I think, I feel like I've had this one time before, but I had forgotten all about it and we don't have them where I live. And she sent me a few of these with her swaps. This is my last one. I am coveting it because it is so delicious. This is like... It's about, there's about four bites in here because it just like melts in your mouth. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Anyway, if you guys live where you can get these truffles, you should get some because they're amazing. Anywho, and then another card that I got was from my dear friend Joanne over in Gillette. Uh, she's so sweet and she sends me cards every once in a while and she does beautiful work. So thank you so much, Joanne. I appreciate that very much. Lastly, I wanted to give a shout out to something on the clearance rack. These little sweet little boxes, they were part of, they were in the catalog, I believe in 2022 in like our Holland Valentine catalog, occasions catalog. And I, I didn't have very many of them left. So I bought another package. They're literally like $4 for 10 boxes. So 40 cents a piece. This is what I have done with them. I put these I added these to some packets of things that I sent out of my house here yesterday. I had some gals that purchased both of the classes that I offer each month. Some people order both of them and I appreciate that very much. And so I did throw a little thank you into the box and they were so easy to make. I found these cute little Ghirardelli chocolates at Walmart. That's the only store I have to shop at. Um, this is a creme brulee. Oh my gosh, let me just tell you, that's delicious also. And then a milk chocolate caramel. So I put a couple of these fun little treats in the box and I just added quickly a piece of designer series paper. This is from the Dandy Designs from Celebration. It's like two and three eighths by three and three eighths. I found some ribbon in my stash of retired ribbon that I thought would look really pretty with it. And then I just stamped thank you and uh, made did a couple circles. So a super quick gift. Um, I hope the ladies love it. Um, I enjoyed making them and I enjoy the fact that they uh, purchased my classes. So thank you so much. Okay. Uh, the Sunshine and Smiles Paper Pumpkin Kit for February. Uh, the subscription period is going on right now. So you can subscribe for it through... I think it's February 10th. Um, and this is a little bit different kit where we are adding a little dye add-on to the kit. So obviously there is a little flower image and a little frog image um, in this particular kit. And you can add 
on these little dies if you want to. So you would go to the online store and you would order the dies. The number is 162486. You must be a Paper Pumpkin subscriber in order to order them. Um, and then they'll coordinate with the stamps that come in your February kit. It's a cute kit. Um, this is the first time they've had like a little die adder. They're only six bucks. So if you are a Paper Pumpkin subscriber and you think you might want the dies, then get to the online store. All right, next up is, of course, it is still celebration, you guys. And if you have a $100 order that you want to place, you should become a demonstrator. And I would love to welcome you to my team of demonstrators because we have a lot of fun. Like I just mentioned, we do a team swap every month. We have a team meeting where we talk a little bit of business, do some recognition. I usually do a mystery stamping project. Um, and then, of course, I'm there to answer questions if anybody has any. Uh, if you are a demonstrator on my team, you get a basic Stamp Happy Academy membership for free once you've placed your first order as a demonstrator. And that also counts for these people that like have signed up under me. So if you are a demonstrator on my team, you can also offer that Stamp Happy Academy membership to your team members because they are still within my uh, team as far as Stampin' Up! is concerned. So you can join with a couple different options. You can join for a hundred or for $99, uh, choose $175 worth of product of your choice. That's it. Or you can pay $30 more Still get $175 worth of product and then get this beautiful boho blue baby boss. And this is actually the reason why a ton of people are joining Stampin' Up! right now is to get this cute little baby boss. So if you're on the fence about whether you should become a demonstrator, you absolutely should. There is nothing hard about it. There's nothing scary. You don't have to do anything except buy stuff at a discount if that's what you want to do. If you are interested in doing anything more, I'm here to help you and I am happy to help you. So um, you can just join really quickly with the link in the description of this video. If you have any questions, be sure to contact me. I'm happy to help. And yeah, so this is still going on through the end of February. Um, I don't know. These machines are probably while supplies last. I haven't heard anything about them being low inventory or anything yet so i'm assuming there's still plenty to go around and if you don't like blue you can also choose white there is a white one also but the blue one super cute moving on to my classes my class for the month of january uses the um country bouquet bundle i'm sure a ton of you guys already have this bundle in your arsenal and so if you'd like to get some fun ideas in using it you can uh, sign up for my class i'll give you a quick little tour of the cards here is one here is another here is a fun fold card that is part of the class there's the back of that and then our final card is this fun heart sunflower um, that is also a part of the class so uh, the description or the links in the description of the video, the cardstock supply kit is $48. I can't add the bundle right now, but I'm assuming that most of you probably have it. Um, and so there you go. All right. We also are using the Adorable Owls as our online class this month. Kelly, Dina, and I do a class together every month. And this month we're using the Adorable Owls. Um, and so I do have some kits for this also. And so if you're interested in that, uh, the link is in the description of this video also. Okay, Stamp Happy Academy. I always talk about it. We just got done doing our catalog kickoff event in Stamp Happy Academy. It was amazing. We had so much fun. We gave away so many prizes, so many bundles, uh, just so much fun stuff, so much inspiration. There were six live stamping classes as part of the kickoff. Um, the stuff is going to stay in the Facebook group forever, as long as Facebook has Facebook groups. So if you uh, did join the catalog kickoff, you'll be able to access the content forever. If you're a Stamp Happy Academy subscriber, you got in for free. If you're not a subscriber, you can get in for $15. You can still get in. Nothing is live, but all the live class links are there. And then we still have a few packets of make and take uh items uh, make and take kit I should say that you can get from me if you so desire uh, the link is down in the description of this video so there you go and finally adhesive kits I always have these for sale you guys know um, they come in these adorable little pouches and you get a full-size liquid glue a roll of glue dots 
um, a roll of tear and tape adhesive, a full seal adhesive. You get a full package of regular dimensionals. You get a sheet of each large and small black dimensionals. You get a ruler, an adhesive, adhesive eraser, and a sand eraser, all in this cute pouch. And the shipping is included, and the link is in the description. So there we go. Let me run through the uh, comments here really quickly just to see if there is anything I need to address. Oh, Susan's birthday is tomorrow. She'll be 65. Well, happy early birthday, Susan. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. We got any questions here? I don't think so. I talked about the brush, and I think we got, yeah, it's a Revlon something or other, and I just can't remember what the darn thing is called. Anywho. All right. Here we are. Project number one. We are going to be using the Celebration Dainty Flowers um paper super exciting oh cheryl's birthday is sunday she's going to be 64. cheryl and susan you guys are very close in age happy birthday to both of you all right so i will also be using the dainty delight stamp set which does of course coordinate with uh, the flowers here and then whoops i forgot my dainty delight dies we'll use a tiny little die out of there and then we're also going to use this label out of the something fancy dies okay so we'll put these aside for just a moment. Let me get my papers out. And we're also going to be using, I think we're going to use these milky dots because they are really fun. Okay, get the papers out. So I've got this little strip of paper for um, the card. This is a one by four. Uh, Terry, I'll have to do something i don't have the box right here with me so uh hold on i'll see if i can get that information to you um what am i doing here so i've got orchid oasis as my card base this is five and a half by eight and a half and then i have a layer of white and i can't remember if i cut this to three and three quarter by five i did three and three quarter by five Starry Sky is three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. So these will layer together really nicely with just a very slight border. And then I have a four by five and a quarter for the inside. Of course, I already said, oh, this is actually one by, should be one by three and three quarters, actually. And then I have a label. I actually have two, so if I screw it up, I have a spare. So that means I probably won't screw it up since I have a spare. And then I've already decorated my envelope with some more of the designer series paper. Since you know, when you get free paper, usually you might get more than one package. And so there's no reason to hoard it. Uh, just use it. And who doesn't like to get a card in the mail with an envelope that has a beautifully decorated flap on it? A two and a half by six inch piece of designer series paper will cover your flap really nicely. And then you'll have just a little bit to trim off. Okay. All right. So this card is pretty darn simple. I need a little scratch paper here. So I'm going to pull my little mini pad here mini grid pad out and I am going to take the large image out of the stamp set and one of the smaller images no naked envelopes ever that is correct oh Francie just said something Terry about how to find that hair dryer thank you Francie all right, so I'm going to ink up my large stamp. This is Starry Sky, and I'm going to stamp it mostly on the page. There's like a little bit hanging off the bottom that I'm not getting. There we go. Uh, the smaller one, Cheryl, is Starry Sky, and then the card base is Orchid. Okay. All right, so that's the outside piece, and I'm going to do the inside also in the same color. So I'm going to stamp like a tall one here and then maybe one a little bit lower and eh, let's just see if we can do this there so that's going to be our inside piece i'm going to close this so i don't get ink all over the place and you know what i'm actually going to close or close i'm actually going to clean these off right now because Starry Sky is a dark color, and Barb's a messy stamper, 
And so uh, it's possible that we could get ink where we don't want it. And I don't like that. Okay. So inside layer, we can go ahead and add that to the inside here. We just use a little seal. And we'll get that on the inside. Right. So if you guys, if any of you are watching me for the first time, welcome to the show. I am live every Thursday night at this time, which is 4 Pacific, 5 Mountain, 6 Central, and 7 Eastern. Unless, of course, I'm getting a tooth pulled, then I'm not going to be here. But normally I'm here. All right, I'm going to add my uh, designer series paper to the bottom here. And so I would welcome you all, and I would ask that you subscribe to my channel um, if you want to see some more okay there we go and i'm gonna attach that to my layer of starry sky oops come on there we go and again like i said this will have a very slight border oh dolly is so sweet dolly said for you guys to all give me a thumbs up so yeah if you wouldn't mind that would be really awesome because the youtube algorithm I have no idea what that means. I just know it's a thing. Uh, really likes that when you uh, give videos thumbs up. And they also like it when you comment. So if you see something that you like that I'm doing, say, hey, I really like that. That's awesome. Or if you think it stinks, I'm fine with you telling me that too. I can take it. Uh, but yeah, the interaction is uh, what the algorithm, whatever, like I said, whatever that is, uh, really likes. So there you go. All right. So I've got, uh, what do we have here? This is some Orchid Oasis metallic woven ribbon. Um, and I just think it goes great with the starry sky. Uh, and it's a little bit brighter. So we're just going to go with it. So I'm going to add this to what I call the seam between the designer series paper and the card layer. And I like to use scotch tape. It's just easier for me. And I'm just going to pull that straight across there. And then I'm going to tape it to the back. So now we have a little bit of bling kind of with that ribbon because it's so fun and shiny. All right. We're going to add this super easy card. Like I said, there's really not too much to it. <laughs> Trish says she doesn't think I've ever done a stinker card. Gosh, I... I'm sure I have trash. A person can't be, you know, 100% all the time. Um, I can't remember. I'm sure there's been some. And, you know, everything I do isn't for everybody. We all have different tastes. So, and I'm okay with that. If there's a card that I make that you don't like, it's totally fine for you not to like it. I, I mean, I get it. Okay. I am going to pull the backings off of my dimensionals here. And then we're going to try to center this, make sure we have it right side up, right? Okay, something like that looks pretty good. All right, so now I'm going to bring in my label. And I have a sentiment out of the stamp set. I actually have it in my Stamparatus. I made a card very similar to this for a swap that I participated in this month. And so I have my uh, stamp already in my Stamparatus on a scrap that I originally cut this label out from. So since this is already all set up, I'm gonna just go ahead and make sure that everything's pushed into place. I'm gonna plop my blank I call that a blank in there, and then I'm going to stamp it. But if I remember correctly, I was using Mary Merlot, and obviously I did not clean off my stamp. Bad Barb. So we're going to clean it off now, because I don't know how Mary Merlot and Starry Sky are going to look together, mixed up together. Spank that a little bit to dry it off, and then we will add our Starry Sky, and we will drop that onto the label bring our little presser tool here and hopefully we are good yep I think that looks pretty good and then we can just pull this blank out of here and we are good to go so you might be wondering how did you start all this Barb well I got a scrap piece of white which I happened to had printed something on and I put my stamp on my stamparatus and I just stamped it on this blank piece of cardstock. I then went over to my Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine 
I have took my die out. I was very careful in my placement on my very first time. So I placed it on there very carefully, centered it, eyeballed it, made sure it was exactly where I wanted it to be. I actually taped it down to the paper with some post-it tape that I talk about quite a bit on my uh, YouTube channel here. Um, I use this post-it labeling and cover-up tape uh, to keep my dies in place. This is the one-third inch. It's pretty skinny. Um, I know they make like a really thick one that's almost like an inch, but I just don't feel like I need that much. This little skinny strip works just great for me. So anyway, um, and then all I have to do is die cut a bunch of these blanks like I had here. And as long as I don't move my stamp, which I just hadn't because I was being lazy, um, I can continue to use that stamp in this particular formation, you know, as long as I, as long as I leave it on here. So anyway, that's how that all came to be. So I'm going to get my stamparatus out of the way here. And I'll put my die back in the package so that I don't lose that. Because losing a die is a huge bummer. All right, so we have this, we have our sentiment piece here. So then I decided I needed to add something to it. It's not that it's plain, but it's kind of plain. So I decided to go with a with some flowers, but I didn't know what color I wanted. So I die cut. There's two different dies that I used. Uh, one of the dies does all four of these little flowers. So one of them does these four, and then the other one does this little connected. I don't know why they're connected. They must be connected for a reason. I don't know what it is. But I did both of these dies, um, one in Starry Sky, one in Orchid, so that I could kind of see what, what I would like better. So I thought what I would do is take one of the flowers and I'm going to end up putting it here on the label. And then I'm going to maybe put like a gem or something in it. I haven't decided yet. But then I also wasn't sure if I wanted to add like some flowers on this. And now I don't think that I do. I think I tried this and I didn't really like it that much. Just kind of covering up what's already there. But I felt like the flowers weren't... I like the detail in the stamped image more so than the, the plain flowers. So there you go. All right, so we have that done. Uh, and then I can't decide if I want to do the dark or the orchid i can't decide dark so do we what do you guys think starry sky or orchid for the flower there's the orchid i know isn't that weird sherry she said she feels that interesting that the flowers are connected i thought so too oh mary said she wants to sign up under me so i need to call her okay yes that's correct mary you can always quit um i probably will call you tomorrow sometime mary Okay, so um, what do you guys think? Orchid, orchid. Oh, we had one starry. Oh, gosh, we're, we're getting some votes here, you guys. Oh, let's see. One starry, two starry, three starry. And then we have, oh, wait, four starries, orchid. Oh, Tammy says no flower. She'd stamp a little of the stamp matching the image. I thought about that, Tammy, but I don't know no flowers oh that's the second no flowers and then we've got starry well we've got a lot of you chiming in here and i do appreciate that i am going to go with a flower that's going to happen um i just don't know what color i feel like i'm going to go with the starry but hold on because i did want to use these milky dots and i don't know if the starry is going to work with my milky dots oh some of you guys are so a lot of you guys are saying no flowers oh, how could you say no flower it's so cute anyway i get it okay so like i said earlier sometimes you like what i do sometimes you don't it, it's totally it makes perfect sense okay so if i was gonna do this and i was gonna use a starry sky dot i feel like it would have to go in the orchid for it to actually even show up so I guess I've changed my mind now and I'm going orchid because that's just how it's got to be. So then I feel like I'd need to add maybe another uh, one or two of these little guys around. Now these I think are supposed to be navy, but I feel like they work. I don't feel like they have to be with navy. I feel like they can be with starry sky. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I think maybe like that. Okay.
Let me get my label put on here with some dimensionals. Here we go. Okay, let's see. Dolly says, what about another label in Starry Sky and split it so it has a border? That is also an option, definitely. What else? Another label, putting a solid. Oh, Donna said the same thing. You guys, you guys, good minds think alike. Dolly and Donna, you guys are thinking, thinking alike here. Okay, I'm going to do this, and then I'll show you my other card that I made in a different color, because sometimes it's fun to see stuff in a different color. Okay, is that even straight on there? Yeah, I think it is. Okay, so that's what I ended up deciding to do with it. I hope you guys like it. If you don't, like I said earlier, you know, sometimes you don't like what I do, and that's totally okay. All right, so let me put that away and then we have the inside and then here is the card that I did also using different colors so this is actually Mary Merlot and Blushing Bride on this one here and I only added one gem I didn't add any gems there um so there you go hopefully that is good all right sounds like my son might be taking a shower I hope not because that's pretty loud down here Okay, I'm putting some stuff away so that we can move on to our next card. Oh, yeah, and then we have, of course, an envelope, which could, I think, be used for either card. I mean, this this uh, design comes out of the designer series paper, so, you know, I think it could be used for either. Okay, um, we are going to put that away. We need to keep that and that. We didn't use those. I also had these little dragonfly trinkets, and maybe I should have put that on there. Maybe I should have just not put anything else and just put a little dragonfly here. That would have been cute, I think. Probably. You know what? Hold on. Let's just see quickly here how that would have worked if we had decided to do that. So I think we can stamp this quickly enough. Maybe you guys don't have anywhere to go, right? <laughs> so we can just be like, we can just be live forever. Just kidding. I won't do that. I know people probably have to eat and have other things to do besides sitting here watching me be live. Okay, we're going to try this and see what happens if we go with the old dragonfly. All right, so here is a dragonfly. What did I do with the lid to the dragonfly? Oh, no. Oh, here it is. Okay, so I need a glue dot. And so I have done some work with these uh, little dragonflies, and they do, uh, they're very small, but if you roll your glue dot, we've talked about this before, rolling the glue dots into like a little tube, little log, and then sticking it back here on the dragonfly, um, then that's like the perfect amount of glue. I hope that that is, that you're able to see that, that little glue dot on there. Okay, so let's see if we if we stuck a dragonfly on here okay here's another little trick if you guys do something with dimensionals and you hate it you can just cut them off in case you didn't know that uh, you can just use your snips and cut them oh that one just came off without okay that's fine all right let's see um, but we still have those gems up there, which I think are kind of screwing with my, screwing up with, uh, that. I don't know. What do you guys think? So that would be the other option would be just to put a dragonfly on there. So two options. You guys decide what you want to do. If you want to copy this card, please feel free to do so. Um, yeah, or you can do it in pink and you can use dragonflies or you can use flowers. We could take these two things off of here and just have the dragonfly. Um, or maybe you could put another little gem down here. I don't know. Do whatever you want to do. So there you go. All right. It's all about options, people, right? Okay. We put those aside so that we can bring them back later in the show. Uh, what else do I need to get out of here? A little bit of trash. And I don't need that. Okay. We are working on card number two. 
All right, so Linda says, Dragonfly for sure, leave the gems. Pat likes the many options. Oh, hello, Pat. Pat's one of my new team members. It's very nice to see you, Pat. Well, you know, see you. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, there you go. And welcome to everybody who's just jumping in here. I hope you guys are enjoying what you're seeing so far. If you missed out on any of it, please go back and watch from the beginning when we're done. Uh, and then you can see the amazing projects that we're creating here. Okay. So next project, we're going to be using the Adorable Owls because it is my online class for the month. And so, and the owls are just so cute. How can you not use them over and over and over and over and over? Because they're just so cute. So this is also a card that I did uh, for a swap. But I'm changing up the colors from the one that I did because I like to show you guys options. So uh, let me move this over here out of the way a little bit and we'll bring in our papers so here are here's my papers I have a card base that is balmy blue so eight and a half by five and a half I have a white layer for the inside four by five and a quarter I have a coastal cabana layer for the outside four by five and a quarter uh, I have a well it's a scrap but it's a three by three it just happens to be cut to three by three I have a little piece of this pattern of the Dandy Designs Designer Series paper, and this is a one and a half by five and a quarter. And then I have a half inch strip of white and a little half inch scrap strip of Bermuda Bay. So the first thing I want to do is to stamp my owl. And so I'm going to use the owl that's in flight. And I have an opportunity now to explain something to you guys. I had a comment on one of my videos the other day from somebody, or actually I think it was today, asking me why I have a post-it note stack underneath my Memento ink pad. Great question, and I'm going to tell you guys why I do that. Um, back in the day, we used to, we had stays on, which we still sell stays on, ink pads, and I'm a pretty heavy-handed stamper. When I go to ink up my stamps, I, I'm heavy-handed. I've always been that way. Well, as you can see, there is a big crack in my stays on ink pad. It's cracked all the way through. The only thing kind of holding it together is of course the pad itself um, and the sticker, but it's definitely broken. And it happened to both of my stays on ink pads. They are both broken. So then we got Memento. And while I was a little bit more careful with my Memento, I felt like I was gonna break it. So what I did was I have a little stack of post-it notes. These are the these one and a half by two I think one and a half by two anyway there's a stack I don't even know how many pages are in there 20 maybe and I have it taped to the bottom of my pad so that when I am pounded on my stamps I have something in here to take like the brunt of the pressure so that my pad doesn't crack so when I'm doing this or if I'm doing this rather than there being nothing, because this pad is recessed in the back. And so when you're pressing down on it, you're putting pressure in the middle of the pad, causing it to potentially break, which is what I did with my stays on pads. So by having that little chunk of post-its in there, I am preventing my pad from pressing down too far and thus keeping it from getting broken. So there you go. I can't remember who asked me that. Somebody made a comment on one of my other videos today asking why I have that in there. And that is why I am a very heavy handed stamper and I break stuff. <laughs> and so I didn't want to break it because once it gets broken, you can really feel it when you're using it. You can feel that it's broken and it's kind of annoying. Okay. Next, I also need a scrap and I forgot that I did. This is just a little scrap circle that I had in my white because I also want this little bow on this other owl. So I am going to kind of mask off around him so I can just get the bow and then I'm going to fussy cut that out anyway but I don't need to have the entire owl so I'm going to ink up that bow kind of on the edge there and then I'm going to remove my mask and stamp that so I just have the bow and then I'm going to throw this in the garbage immediately so that I don't end up getting ink on my hands because of it. So now I'm going to color in my cute little owl and I have some Stampin' Blends markers here. I have, what do I have? I have a dark pale papaya, a light granny apple green, a light balmy blue, 
and both of the pool parties, the light and the dark. Okay, so I'm going to start out with the light balmy blue, and I'm going to uh, color my little owl. And I've had people say, you can't do that. Owls aren't blue. Uh, you know what? It's art. So I feel like an owl, a flower, a heart, it can be anything I want it to be. And I want her to be blue. So there you go. And she'll be super cute. All right, and then we're gonna do this part of her body. Again, still using the light balmy blue. And I chose the colors of the pool party and the balmy blue because um, those are the colors in the designer series paper. Now the pale papaya is not really in the designer series paper, but I am gonna use that to color her beak and her feet. Okay, so that is done-ish. Now I have the light pool party and I'm going to come in and do her sweet little face. Okay. Boy, they sure did name this stamp set correctly, didn't they? When they said adorable owls, they were not kidding. And you guys can get this stamp set for free during celebration if you don't already have it. Uh, by spending $50 in my online store, or you can add it to your owl class if you uh, need to. Okay, then I have the dark pool party, and I'm going to do the bow. Whoops, get the lid off of that one. That one's pretty tight. I'm going to do the bow in the dark. And I'm actually going to go over this once more or twice more, to, <clears throat> excuse me, to get it just a little bit darker. So I'm going to go ahead and add another layer of blend here. And then possibly a third. Not possibly, because I literally just did it. So definitely a third. Okay, and this is my light granny apple green, which I'm going to do the outer... I guess right outside of her pupil, uh, she's going to have a green eye. Okay, and then we're going to do her feet and her beak in the dark pale papaya. Oh my gosh, she is just the sweetest little thing. Okay, and oh my. I got a little aggressive there pulling my marker the lid off. All right, so I'm going to push that back together and I'm going to do her ear here. And then maybe a little darker on the belly, maybe a little bit there on the wings and the head. Okay, put that aside and then I think that's good. I've skipped that ear on purpose because I'm going to cut out this little bow and then I'm actually going to put the bow over the ear. So I thought it would be kind of cute to have her have a little bow in her quote unquote hair. So we'll just do a tiny bit of fussy cutting here. All right. Oh, is somebody talking about Wyoming? We will be there through there in a couple of weeks. Oh, awesome, Candy. Well, welcome to our wonderful state. And I think Mary did say, like, what part of the state are you coming through? Are you coming uh, through on I-90, through Sheridan, or by Sheridan? Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of glue to uh, the little ear up here. Whoops, I think I have a glue booger on there. So that's going to prevent the glue from coming out. All right. So I tried to put a little tiny dot there so that I can just get the center of the bow right there. Oh my gosh, so cute. Oh, I should have waited. I should have not done that. I have to cut this out. So we're going to have to wait a second. We'll put the card together before we actually uh, die cut her since I put the bow on. And if I run it through the stamp and cut in a boss machine, I have a feeling that the bow will come off. So... Uh, we're going to go ahead and just add a little bit of adhesive to our strip of designer series paper here. But before we do that, I just remembered I need to stamp on this. 
So I wanted to add a little bit of interest to the side of the card here. What better way to do that than buy some flowers? So here is a little stamp out of the Sweet Citrus stamp set that I'm going to use to do a little bit of stamping on the outside here. All right, so I'm going to ink this up. I'm actually going to stamp it off and then put it on my card. I don't want it to be super dark, but I want it to have a little bit of interest here. And I'm obviously, I don't need to put any on this side because the designer series paper is going to be over there. So we won't need any there. Okay. And maybe that and maybe right here. Okay. Whoops, I'm trying to get that. Okay. Okay. Uh... The eyeballs are giving me the business as usual. Okay. I think I got that on there straight and right. Yep. All right. So uh, I like to sometimes add things to what I call the seam, which is the area between the designer series paper and the cardstock. So I'm going to use some uh, Coastal Cabana twine. This is a little three pack of twine that is in the mini catalog right now. And it's actually on the page with the kind of outdoor scenery, the bicyclist, that kind of thing. Um, so you might have skipped by it because if that type of stamp set doesn't interest you, you probably wouldn't have stayed too long on that particular page. So, uh, but that's where you'll find this. So I'm going to go ahead and start wrapping it around my card. I'm going to end up putting my little owl about right here. So that's why I can do this to kind of hide, hide it there. So I'm going to wrap that around, actually going to wrap it around a couple of times. There we go. So we've got it wrapped around twice. Pull the tape out here again, get that. And then I'm just going to snip off that excess amount of twine. So pretty simple there. Just wrapped it around, taped it down, and then we can add it to the front of the card. And I think I'm going to add it with dimensionals because the twine does take up a little bit of space there. So if we use dimensionals, then the dimensional is about the same thickness as the twine, in my opinion. So we'll do that. All right. Peel the backings off. Sherry is saying she loves this DSP with all the different colors. It's so many different types of stamps. I know. This paper is literally like my favorite paper right now. I almost can't make a card without using it. It's very difficult to design something without using this. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and add some of those little flowers to the center, uh, to the middle of, bleh, to the inside of the card. Uh, what do I want to do? I guess I need, um, the sentiment I'm going to use is going to say just a note on the outside. Um, it's from the Happy Label stamp set. Um, I really like this phrase, there's no one like you. It's so nice. Uh, but I think we're going to go with life is better with you on this one. All right. And pull out a block here and we'll get whoops that's I wasn't quite ready for you okay I think I'm going to try using a balmy blue sentiment and then the coastal cabana flowers we'll just sort of see what happens here okay this is actually it's this is going to be a portrait style card I have to check myself sometimes because I make portrait style cards most of the time but then if I make um, a landscape card, I forget what I'm doing. <laughs> and you guys can attest to seeing me do this. I forget what I'm doing and then I put my inside on wrong, like in the wrong orientation. So just had to pay a little bit of attention there. And now I can add this to the inside. Okay. And for those of you that may have never watched me before, this is how I put my inside layers in. Okay, this is how my card would open. I'm going to turn it upside down and I am going to put my layer in so that I have the same amount of space 
So it'd be at the bottom, the outside, and at the top. And by doing that, when you open up the card, if there isn't the same amount of space here, you're not going to see it because it's all that color over here. So that's just a little tip that I like to share. Some people find it stupid. Some people find it amazing. You do with it what you will. Okay. I also need to stamp my just a note sentiment that I have here from the same stamp set. And I'm going to actually do this in black on a half inch strip of white. And I just literally stuck my thumb in the ink. Gosh, yuck. Okay. Not very hard, just slightly. All right. So I'm putting this uh, towards the edge of the card, the little piece of card stock here. That looks good. Close the ink there. And then I'm going to bring in my little happy labels punch. I love this little scallop um, design here. So I'm going to slide that in all the way and snip that off. And then I'm going to bring in my handy little photo trimmer that we don't sell, but I have found one on Amazon that I do have linked in the description of the video. If you're interested in a little photo trimmer, it's very handy to keep on your desk. Um, they're just, of course, I can't cut an entire piece of cardstock with it, obviously, but um, I can do little trimming jobs like that. All right, so I'm going to add a tiny bit of glue to the end of that. And here's where my little tiny strip of Bermuda Bay is going to come in. I sometimes like to have a little tiny bit of color poking out from the end of my sentiment strips. And this one is no different. And so I'm just going to snip off a little bit. And I thought I cut these to the same size, but <laughs> apparently not. I thought they were both half inch. Close, but no cigar, as they say. All right. So then I'm going to add this centered. And then I feel good on our owl. And we can bring in the baby boss. And we can run this through. Okay. So I think I have my stylish shapes dies here. I do. This is the third largest circle out of the Stylish Shapes dies. It is the perfect size for our little owl friend here. So let me get my uh, boss set up. And let's see. I'm going to try to get most of her in the circle without, you know, hopefully not cutting any of her off. Pretty close. Put my top plate on there and then run it through. There we go. And that did not ruin my bow at all. Yay! And since I only put a dot of glue right underneath the middle of the bow, I should be able to pop that up just ever so slightly to give that a little bit 3D effect. All right, and then we're going to add her right here to the card. And since she's going to be straddling the ribbon or the twine, I'm going to put a dimensional on either side of where that is. And we're covering up our tape, so no one's going to know that we have tape there. And I'm not, I'm not exactly trying to even get it in the middle. I just want to stick it on there. Oh my gosh, how stinking cute is that? Now, look, here is another one that I did. Actually, my daughter designed this card here. She was here over Thanksgiving, actually. That's how long ago it's been since I did this card. And she designed that for me. And she did all of the coloring of those owls. And so then today, I decided I wanted to switch it up just a teeny tiny little bit for you guys and do a different color. So this is the same pack of paper, the Dandy Designs. It's amazing. But look, there's more. Also, when I designed the card, I designed it so it could be the other way. So not only can you do this card in the portrait uh, portrait mode, you can do it in the landscape mode too. And it's super cute both ways. And then you can do it in any color that you want, right? So there you go. Oh my gosh, that's crooked. I'm, not, I'm, I'm gonna pretend it's not. I just noticed it was. I'm gonna pretend it's not. So anyways, there you go, guys. Owl cards, so cute. 
Uh, remember that we are doing our online class. I do have some kits left still, and you can purchase one with the description in the video. So there you go. All right, let me get these out of the way, and we will do a quick clean of the stamps before we put them back so that they don't end up getting ink where we might not want it. Oops, I just kind of threw that in there pretty aggressively. And there. Okay. So now let me grab these stuff for my final project of the evening. And that is going to be using the Share a Milkshake bundle. Now, I have been offering something called a Be a Boss at Home class for a very long time. I am working on my 97th month of this class that I offer. Um, I started it, oh gosh, I do it twice a year for four months each. I usually do it in, let's see, November, December, January, February. We take a couple months off and then we do July, August, September, October. So twice a year, four months each. So if I'm on like 96 or 97 divided by eight, that tells you how many years I've been doing this class. About 10 plus. It's a fun class for me. What it is, is it's a class. That it's $50 a month. I send you the supplies to make three or four projects. At the end of the fourth month, you get a $150 order to place with me and purchase whatever you want. So you're paying $50 a month for four months of classes, and then you get a $150 Stampin' Up! order at the end. So, but one of the things about the class is that everything that's in the class has to be, it can't be a stamped image that's die cut because I'm not allowed to stamp images and die cut them for my class attendees. So everything has to be something that's just die cut and I just mail it to them. So this card is one of the cards that we're doing this month. I'm actually going to do some stamping and die cutting just because that's how I would normally do it. So I will give them the sample of just die cuts only, and then it will show them what they could do if they actually purchased the bundle and had the stamps with the class. Okay, so we're starting out, guess what? Dandy Designs Paper again, because it's amazing. Um, and we're going to use Fresh Freesia as our card base for a quarter, no, five and a half by eight and a half. I have two layers of white. I think they're the same. Yeah, four by five and a quarter, one for the inside, one for the out. And then I have this uh, piece of designer series paper, and this measures three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. Oh, Carol says, how come when some people comment, it's in black background? Wow, I have no idea, Carol, because I don't see that either. Interesting. I, I don't know what the answer is. Okay. Uh, then we have this piece of this pattern of the designer series paper that is one and a half by uh, whatever this was, three and seven eighths. I do have uh, a few of the die cuts out of the share milkshake set. There is this fun grid and that is what this is right here. So we have the little grid cut out. Uh, we have a little half inch strip of white. I have a little silver spoon, uh, the little spoon die out of one of our silver uh, foil papers here. So fun. Um, and then we're going to be doing a little bit of stamping on some scraps. So I need a scrap of white. And then I need some petal pink scraps. Where is a petal pink scrap? Here's one. Okay. So let me do some stamping first. Sherry says, my chat box shows all comments with a black background. Not sure you were seeing. I think there is something within your own YouTube settings that if you want YouTube to be what they call dark mode, um, then everything in your backgrounds is black. Um, and maybe that's what Sherry has. Carol, I'm not sure if that's what you're experiencing or not. I'm not sure. I'm not a YouTube uh, guru. Okay, so I'm going to bring in a foam mat here. And I have a couple of the stamps. So I have the super bold stamp and then I have the overlay stamp. And now when I'm using these bold stamps, even though I cleaned this just a little bit ago, you can get dust particles. All right. Get that. So I'm going to get the dust particles off of this. And I'm going to get them off of this one too. 
So I'm just using a piece of regular scotch tape and I'll do this right before I'm actually gonna stamp it because photopolymer stamps are kind of sticky and they can absolutely um, collect dust. Of course, that means I'm admitting that my house is dusty. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't, I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna ink up this part of this image. Oh, dang, I might be able to stamp it this way. I think I shall. All right, so we're going to stamp that. I'm using Fresh Freesia ink. Okay. And now I'm going to ink this larger image up. I think we're good. Fresh Freesia again. And I'm just going to look through my stamp, and I can see where I need to stamp it. And then this is what we get. So you get this kind of two-tone cup where you've kind of got some shadowing going on, which is pretty cool. And then you would die cut that. And of course, I've already done that. So we've got that done. Then we have the uh, milkshake top or ice cream scoop or whatever you want to call it. Now, it's also a bold image. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get all the dust off of my stamp. So that when I ink it up, hopefully it doesn't have any, it won't have any dust on it. Now, sometimes, of course, your ink pad might have dust on it or some little specks of something. And if that's the case, of course, um, that will leave a, a little spot on your stamping. So I've stamped that full strength. I've huffed on it and I'm going to stamp it again. So I have a little bit lighter image for my second round there. Okay, close up my ink. And then I did die cut those two pieces with the coordinating die. And you'll notice that this die does give us a little slit where we can add the spoon or straw or cherry that is also in this amazing set. All right, so let me move these out of the way because we don't need those. And now, for the most part, all we really have to do is some assembly. So we're going to add our designer series papers. First of all, I'm going to add this one to that layer. So let me get some adhesive on there. Oh gosh, so I'm going to try to eyeball this and I'm going to fail. So I'm going to bring in a scratch paper here uh, with the uh, markings. I'm going to butt my paper up against one of the dark lines and then I'm going to use these other uh, grids to line up my paper because I am a terrible for lining things up. I really struggle with that. I don't know why. Why? Well, I don't know why. I, I just do. All right, so now we're going to add some adhesive. And then we're going to put this on the white layer. Again, there's going to be just a very slight border, like a sixteenth of an inch. I just wanted uh, this layer of designer series paper to kind of pop a little bit. So that's why I did that. Okay. So then I would be adding my little grid sheet, something like that, and my milkshake cup over my grid, something like this. So since the grid is pretty skinny, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my grid on my silicone mat with my card underneath so I can actually see where I want this to be. Uh, how, the rotation of it and everything. And then I'm going to add some glue to the back of my milkshake cup and add it to this layer here. Okay, so that's kind of how I want that. So then, of course, my glue leaks through, which is fine. I'll just rub that off. And now I can just add more glue like this to the back of my cup and I won't make a mess. Okay. So then I've got my little sentiment strip here and there is the word celebrate in this stamp set. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to bring in a bit of a darker color. Fresh Freesia and Blackberry Bliss coordinate really well together. So I'm going to bring in the Blackberry Bliss here. And we'll stamp our little celebrate phrase here. And I'm going to bring that little label punch back in if I can find it. Yep. And we're going to do that same little scallop edge because I just love it so much. There we go. And then I'm going to snip off the other edge. 
I'm going to add a tiny bit of glue back here. And then I'm going to tuck that underneath my milkshake glass. Like so. Okay. Then I'm going to add my uh, little, I don't know, milkshake fluff ice cream. I don't know. This one I'm kind of turning a little bit of an angle. And then this one here, I'm going to add a tiny bit of glue right through that slit so that when I stick my spoon in, it'll hit that glue and then stick. And then I'll just add a little bit more glue. And this time I'm going to kind of rotate this the other direction. And that way I have like two colors of ice cream on this. Okay. And then... We're going to add this to the front and we'll use some dimensionals. And then I'll show you my other card that I did that doesn't use any of the stamps. And so the girls will get their kits and they will put it together and then they will see the picture that I email them showing what they can do if they have the stamp set. And then they may or may not purchase it with their $150 order. It's entirely up to them. All right. So I'm trying to center that, as you can tell. This is going to go on the inside. And I kind of feel like I've got some glue on my finger that I'm trying to get off. It's bugging me. Um, what do I want to put on the inside? So we had celebrate on the outside. I think we'll go life is sweeter with you. That's always a nice phrase to say to somebody. And we need a block. Okay. I've got to be careful. This is the block that has glue on it. So... Got to be careful. All right. So I am going to stamp this also in Blackberry Bliss, I think. Or do I want to stamp it in Freesia? No, I think we're going to go Blackberry. And then I think we might stamp. There's a little uh, cherry in this set and some little hearts. So maybe we'll do the hearts. Hold on here. Let me think about what I'm doing. That's good. And then we have the little hearts. Get another block. And these I'm going to put in, I'm going to go around my sentiment with the freesia. So we'll just kind of do that. And that, and I think that always just jazzes up your inside a little bit when you um, add some additional elements besides your sentiment. And do that same thing where I'm going to flip my card around. And then... There we go. Okay, and then the last thing I wanted to do was add some gems. I did find these. These are our newest, it's one of our newest gems out of the mini catalog. They're called Opaque Adhesive Backed Gems. And you can see that we have some gorgeous grapes, some melon mambo, fresh freesia, and then some white. And I am going to try to use some freesia ones. So... And I know I always do the same, the same kind of thing, you know, putting things in the same spot, but it just seems to work. Why? I don't know. And then a medium one, maybe right here under our sentiment. Okay. So now if you're in my class, this is what you're going to get the pieces for. You'll have to find your own stamp that's skinny that fits on this. And then I actually used some different gems. These are our pastel, what are they called? Pastel pearls. Pastel pearls. So they got some pastel pearls. And of course, I die cut the cup out of the designer series paper. Um, I just gave them die cuts. This one I actually colored with a fresh freesia marker to make it a little bit darker. So it really popped off the paper a little bit better. Um, and yeah, and then a spoon and everything. So they got all the parts to make the card. And then they'll get this picture also to show them that they can do uh, different things if they have the stamps also. So those are my three projects for you guys tonight. So let me bring them all back in. Move everything out of the way. Oh, okay. And let's bring in our cute little owl project. And then our other cards. So we had a lot of fun today uh, with different colors of stuff. Oops, I need to scoot some more stuff out of the way because I've got a mess here. 
Um, and I think we kind of decided that we liked the dragonfly. So I'm going to go back in and fix that card and make it be the dragonfly. Actually, I should probably put the cards that I made on the top. Okay, there they are. Oh, and somebody said there's not a stinker in the bunch. Who said that, Trish? <laughs> Today, Trish, there's not a stinker in the bunch. So thanks. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for the thumbs up. Thanks for purchasing the classes from me. All of you that are brand new watchers, I appreciate you very much. You can go ahead and click subscribe. I think down here you'll find a subscribe button at some point. Um, and then you can uh, be notified when I go live. I go live every Thursday night, 4 Pacific, 5 Mountain, 6 Central, 7 Eastern. And I look forward to seeing you guys again next week. Have a great week, guys. Bye-bye.